Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited because I am going to do a comparison video between all the different art crayons that I own and that are on the market. So meaning not all the crayons that are on the market I own, but all the ones that I have, I've pulled out. There are six different kinds that I'm going to be comparing today. They go by different names depending on the company, but they all have a crayon-like consistency and they're water soluble. That means that you can blend them with water and they can be used as watercolors. And I am going to compare different techniques with them. Not so much the techniques of how to do things. You can go and watch different techniques on how to use each one of these in separate videos. I more want to compare between them doing the same technique and using the same mediums underneath. I'm going to tell you which ones I'm going to be comparing today. I'm going to be comparing the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, the Dina Wakely Scribble Sticks, the Marabou Art Crayons, the Prima Marketing Water Soluble Oil Pastels, the Gelatos, and this There Went Art Bars. There's definitely other water soluble crayons out there in the market, like the Ink Tense and the Neo Colors. Ink Tense is also by There Went, while the Neo Colors is, I can't remember the con name of the company, but you can definitely check those out. What I want to do is, I'm not going to be giving you an opinion. I love all of these. So, I'm not going to give you an opinion on which one is the best or which one is the worst. That's not the intention of this video. What I really want to emphasize is to, for you to see how they react in different, in different techniques. And then you can decide what's most convenient for you. What you would think you would use the most. You could choose like two of them or, you know, if you maybe don't know how to use some of these, then this is an opportunity to see them and compare them to others. So if you've had some, let's say, sitting there and you don't know what to do with them, this is a great way of watching this video and learning from it. Or you could just, let if you don't have any of these art crayons and you've been thinking of getting some, then you'll know the difference. Um, I'm hoping that I will not say anything opinionated in either way. Sometimes I go like, wow and amazing, but I do love all of these equally. So I just want to compare the different crayons and just... Not specifically, as I said, to give an opinion, but just to show you that there's different options out there in the market. And I'm going to try to compare colors that are similar to each other as much as I can so you can really see the difference. So let's get started. So for the first paper that I split into six sections and I put the names on each one, I picked some blue colors from the different sets. And at the end of this video, I will definitely talk about the price point and how many come in a set, how much it is individually to buy and how it works. But right now I'm just going to experiment with the actual crayons and just wanted to let you know I'm listing all the links to all the products below in the description area. So you can definitely go ahead and choose and pick and decide on price point depending on what you want to buy. If you are looking to buy some crayons, then this is the best paper. This paper is a watercolor paper. This is a cold press watercolor paper. This is the Prima Marketing one, but any of the cold press ones will work. This one is untreated. There's nothing on it, no gesso, no nothing. And I just want to show you how they react with this. So I'm going to make some marks. This is the gelato, then the marabou crayon. Now the marabou, I did not have the exact blue, so it's going to have to be this blue. Now when I'm applying them here, the, marab the marabou is definitely creamier than the gelato. The gelato is usually very creamy, but the marabou seems to be more creamy when I'm adding it in terms of smoothness. Let's see about the distress crayon. Oh, actually, no, this is really, really, also really smooth. The Distress Crayon goes on really smoothly, almost like butter as well. So, so far, this one is even smoother. Let's go with the Prima Marketing Marketing. This is more acts like a crayon, not as smooth as the other ones. And then I'm going to do the Scribble Sticks. Oh, this is actually the hardest ones. It's almost like a 
pencil. You can hear it also in the sound, right? So the smoothness you can hear in the sound. So just in comparing smoothness, this is the least smooth out of it. This is the most smooth, second, and these are about the same. And let's see about the Derwent Art Bar. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not as smooth. Again, also like a crayon, very similar to the scribble stick. Okay, so now that I put all six of them, I want to try a couple things. First, so I'm actually going to try it with my finger and see what happens if I can actually blend it. So you can blend, but I'm really putting a lot of effort. But that has nothing to do, I don't think, with the actual crayons. You see, they blend really nicely, but if I had gesso underneath this, it would blend better. This one is blending a little bit better. Yeah, so the creamier they are, the, the better the blending. Yeah, this one is blending as well. Why did I think this was blue? It doesn't look like blue, it looks like black, but it is like a dark blue, I think. Okay, let's see about this one. So I am putting a lot of effort to blend these, but I think that's because, as I said, there's no there's no art, there's no gesso underneath. I can blend the scribble stick when there's no gesso underneath. Same with the art, with the there went one. Okay, so this one blended, the Marabou blended the best on on this unprepped watercolor paper. Now I'm going to try it with a wipe and I'm gonna try on this one. So let's see, so yeah, so this one blends and I'm more looking to see if there's any markings. So it blended really nicely. This is the gelato blended really nicely and no markings were left on that. So that's nice. Sometimes there's a lot of lines and markings that are that stay on. Marabou, wow, beautifully how it blends, very nicely. Okay, let's try with the distress crayon. Oh, there's the blue coming out. Yeah, also blended really nicely on watercolor paper. And let's try the water-soluble oil pastel. very nicely i mean i think like when you have the good quality watercolor paper it makes a huge difference okay let's try the scribble sticks also blends really nicely you don't see any lines and the last one is the derwent art bar and as well so in terms of blending over this watercolor paper, this is the cold press watercolor paper. I'm quite impressed with it. Now we're gonna do the test with the actual watercolor, with a paintbrush. And I'm going to take this one. This one just has water in it already. And I'm going to blend it together. And I wanna see what happens when I blend it up. Beautiful. So the gelatos, of course blend up and blend nicely together very nice so let me just clean the paintbrush and there we go so a lot of them blend really nicely even with water so i really like that so far so far i love every single one of them I love how they blend, the intensity of it, beautifully. Okay, let's see about the this one, the Prima one. Also really well. Let me put some more water. So obviously the more water you put, the more it will blend. Let's try the scribble sticks now. So the scribble sticks give you a, a lighter effect because they don't they don't go as as much. I mean you can still 
see an intense color in it but it's not it's different you can see it's they're more translucent so let's go with that the scribble sticks are more translucent let's see about the derwent one the derwent are also more translucent but you can still blend i like it that you can still blend the colors underneath so that's really really good so there we go so the comparison so far i mean they're all amazing to tell you the truth i can't even tell you which one i would choose over another i really can't but i just really like this so okay so this is the first test this is on an untreated paper this is a cold pressed watercolor i'm going to bring now uh, one that is already treated with gesso. This is also a cold press watercolor, but in this case, it doesn't really matter. Once you put a coat of gesso, it doesn't really matter what type of paper you have underneath. As long as it's coated with gesso, you're going to get a different effect. So that's the beauty of it. So let's start with this one. So I picked some purples because I'm bored of using the same colors all the time. I don't like always using the same colors. So I thought I would compare purples instead. And this paper is prepped with white gesso. This is the Prima Finiber white gesso and I gave it just one coat. And it will give a different effect. The blending will be easier. And I really want to talk about why art crayons, they are so easy to use. The water soluble crayons are just easy to apply. You can cover a surface really well. They're amazing for writing. You can also use them for so a variety of things. So that's why they're so cool to have because you can use them for so many different things. So I'm going to start again. And this time I will start again with the purple. This is the gelato. I want to do the same thing. So I'm going to create these circles. Again, not as smooth as the other one. Let's see about the purple from Marabou. And the nice thing about Marabou, you can move them up and down. You can push the tip up. I think the distress crayons are the, crayons are the same. Oh, the gelatos too. The only ones that are like these without that you have to just peel the paper are these other three. Okay, so Marabou crayons. Yeah, very smooth. Like I said, even on the on the white gesso. Then let me try the Tim Holtz ones. Yeah, the Tim Holtz ones are actually quite creamy on anything, basically. Oh, I did the circles backwards, but that's okay. Just, you'll get you get the idea. So let's do the circles the same this way, so it doesn't get confused. And the last one is the Derwent. And obviously you can see that within the different companies, there is different colors. And some of them have so many sets that you can find the variety of colors of them. So, for example, Tim Holtz has so many sets of colors. While Derwent or Prima or even the... Marabou crayons and the Dina Weekly come with less uh, less colors, less variety. So that's another thing. If you're looking for a lot of variety, obviously you have to pay for that variety. But if you're looking for a lot of variety, then this is the place that you can you can basically find them. This is the Tim Holtz has the most variety in terms of colors. Okay, so let's start blending with our fingers. And it's a little bit easier to blend this way. Let me get the wipe so I can especially the marabou wow this is really blending easily not as easy for the tim holtz which i am surprised i thought it would be same with the prima one so compared to this one i remember well we already put water in this but it actually blended oh no they blended with the wipe much easier than obviously with the with the finger but I just want to now if I wet my finger and I actually apply it you can get a better blend obviously so the wetter it is the better that's why they're called water soluble and this one doesn't do it at all so now I am 
making mistakes as I see and I am blending the wrong thing but it doesn't really matter I just want to show you so for example with the wipe okay you see how how cool this one because it has the gesso you can actually blend and you can actually also remove so the cool thing about having the cool thing about having gesso is that it blends really nicely it doesn't blend as intense but it blends really nicely and you can also remove which is nice if you make mistakes let's try the wipe with this you see it's like a different effect altogether beautifully how they blend I love it okay So it becomes an actual watercolor before it just became a blended crayon well now it's an actual watercolor effect and the lightest one still blends completely but the lightest one is this one I think the intensity of the crayons or maybe it's the strength of how I put them makes a difference so in terms of the watercolor now huge difference how it blends right because you can really create that watercolor effect you couldn't do that when you didn't have the gesso so I really love the watercolor effect of this how cool is that so you can create really neat effects with the watercolor the gelatos especially blended really nicely hold on let me put some more water So I love how this is giving me a more smooth finish as opposed to the gelatos are giving me a more of a watercolor effect. This one is more like paint. It almost feels like paint. It's hard to explain, but it feels like paint. Let's see about the art crayons. Also, this is more like paint. You see how it's more intense? It doesn't give me that watercolor effect I mean it could but it just continues it has so much on it that I could paint the whole block with this so it feels more like paint than anything else let's try with the these this is a prima one yeah a little bit more like watercolorish Let's start with the scribble sticks. Also, very watercolor. So this one, because it's not as intense, it really gives you that watercolor look. I really like that. As I said, I like all of them, but some of them give you different effects. This is why I like having all different ones. This is, gives you the lightest watercolor out of all of them. And that's nice to see as well so that's really cool uh, we'll put these aside just so you can compare the gessoed one and the non gesso one so this is the gesso you can see let me compare the apples with apples so there is the first two right so they the, it's more of a watercolor effect as opposed to an intense effect then you have these two which is the marabou crayons and the dina wakely ones you see the difference in the effect and really huge difference in terms of the intent i mean the derwent art bar so when you add the water with the gesso it was a big difference this is more like paint while this is more like a watercolor okay so these are the two that i'm comparing i will put these aside and i'm going to bring a third one here for this one I wanted to compare the different gessos so you saw how I added the white gesso and I wanted to see we would work the same on clear gesso so I put a whole clear gesso coat on the background and then I added a little patch of the black just to see how it would react on clear gesso and how it would react on black gesso and I'm going to switch the colors as well okay for this one it has the clear gesso as I said and the black gesso and I grabbed some green crayons and I'm going to make smaller patches because I want to try a couple of techniques on them so I'm going to just make small lines here and 
and the next one is the marabou so obviously there's advantages of and disadvantages to everything each company makes their own unique way of making these crayons so you basically have to figure out what you want the most what kind of things are the most important to you whether it is price value whether it is intensity of color whether it is what comes how many the type of colors the amount of colors they come in so there's so many different things to consider this is why i was saying that you need to figure out what's the best thing for you oops i just realized i didn't put this one here so so far they're being applied the same way on the clear gesso and the black gesso this is clear gesso and black gesso from prima marketing but any clear gesso black gesso would work so that is fine to do as well so i am going to go straight with the watercolors no need to do the wipe test it's probably the same i just want to go directly with the paintbrush and just blend them and of course you can see that they blend beautifully let's try on the black so they go beautiful on black as well and you can also use them and blend them on black let's go to the next one i just wanted to see how far it goes so you see this kind of they have a lot of pigment all of them do okay so you can see how far it goes same with this one the marabou ones look perfectly on black as well so you really see that there's a huge similarity between all of them and of course i don't know how much i'm applying of each one on the background so some of them might look like they're not as intense but that's because maybe i didn't add as much right so you never know you what you want to see is blendability you want to see that it looks like watercolor that you can add it to different things so that's beautifully as well so really nice to be able to blend these so i really like all of them and you can see the difference for example this one as i said before these last two always blend a little bit lighter than all the other ones which is advantage if you don't if you're scared of doing things and you don't want to put a lot of color as you can see this is almost translucent you barely you can barely see it well the marabou you could see it really well i wonder if it has to do with how much i apply so i'm going to test that i want to make sure that it's not me putting too little on so i put a lot more now and you can see they're still becoming translucent so it has nothing to do with the amount that i'm putting on same with the darwin so let's start with this and go ahead and do experiments at home if you have the other one if you have the neo colors or you have the ink tents then you go ahead and you experiment with them so the same with these ones the derwent is kind of more translucent which was something that we already saw right we already knew that they were more translucent another thing a test that i want to do is the paint test from the art crayons so this is where you get some wetness hold on i'm gonna get some wetness on this and i want to see if i paint with them this way so here we go so there we go you see you can you make your own watercolors with these right you could take pieces of these all of these and you can make your own watercolors so that's the beauty of them but you see when you're painting like this the watercolor doesn't show on black as much let's start with the marabou crayons how it works again same thing you can really make beautiful watercolors with it so this is really nice so they don't show on black when you do the watercolors okay let's start let's take the tim holtz crayon same thing 
So I'm testing the tip to see if how intense is the watercolor I can create. I've seen people put pieces of the crayons inside little bottles and putting water and mixing it and making your own spray. So there's lots of ideas out there. This is why I said this is only to show you the comparison. It's not to give you all the ideas for creating. So all of them have the same similar effect that you can do by painting with them like this. So that's good to know. Let's see with the, which one am I missing? Oh, the, the Dina Wakely one. So all of them have the same effect. They all are amazing in terms of creating watercolor. Again, following the same thing, these are lighter, the last two. So if you are looking for something that is a little bit lighter, that is not as intense, because you like it when it's lighter, then this these are the colors to go with. These are the crayons to go with, I meant to say. So they all have the similar effect that way, so that's good. And okay, so this is what I created with the clear and black gesso. And I just want to tell you one thing. The one thing that things that the gelatos has is it has the metallic colors. And I think that the stress crayon have a couple colors. I think they have the gold and the silver. But all the other ones might have it. I am actually not sure. I know Prima doesn't. Their went might have in the ink tense ones, but not in this art bars. But the gelatos have a set of metallics. And I want to show you how nice they look on black. So they're quite intense and you can kind of see the shininess of them. I don't know if you can on, on the thing, but you can see that they're shinier. They're kind of shimmery and they work well on both white and black, obviously, but you really see the shimmery on the black. So that's one thing that I wanted to add that the gelatos have that really nice shimmery color as well as their matte colors as well. Okay, now I want to work on this distress paper from Tim Holtz. This is a really high quality paper, mixed media paper, and also can take watercolor. So I really wanted to compare to see how it looks on this. And I picked some pink colors this time so you could see the difference. Now the Derwent color does not have a pink. I went with a red in this one. And another thing I wanted to say is that the gelatos, they come in a bigger size. They come in the double scoop size, so you can cover more area, especially for large projects. So you could always get those as well. The only thing with gelatos is there's, there's so many colors. They have the regular colors, and then they have the metallic colors, the pastel colors, the, the neon colors. There's so, so many. So it becomes really expensive when you need to buy, but there are so many different kinds of colors, right? So... If you want to have a lot and you don't care about how much you're spending, so definitely go with something like gelatos or distress crayons, which uh, have a lot of different colors. Or you could get a set like, like the Prima one, which has 24 colors already. Or the scribble sticks have two sets of 12 colors. So I'm going to talk about all those after. So I know I get distracted sometimes and go off topic, but I will compare these ones as well. Another thing I wanted to compare is how to create water color paint on my mat. So I always work on this mat. This is a grayish color mat. It, it's the Ken Oliver mat and it's the large one. It covers almost my whole desk and it's really good because number one, it's clingy. So things don't move as much when you're working on them. And also it's really easy to clean. I've caked it on with so many things here and it's so easy to clean. Another thing I wanted to talk about the art crayons is that talking about cleaning is that they're so easy to clean because they're water soluble. They're so easy to clean. So first I'm going to test one line of them like this, and then I'm going to create color with them. So just to make sure that I know where things are, I will put them in front. One yeah. of the things that bothers me about some of these is that the lids. I tend to lose lids all the time. So the first three that I'm working with have these lids and I'm always searching 
to see where these lids are. The other three, the ones that comes in the set, don't actually have lids. So the nice thing about them is you never ever lose the lid. I'm always searching for the lids on my desk. I am not very organized. So that's the only thing sometimes that annoys me. I wish they came with no lids, but what can I do? It protects them. So that's why. So the Dina Wakely ones, I want to talk about that. They're actually the most crayon like in terms of how they draw you can actually write with it and stuff as well so it's really interesting same with these there went ones this one is kind of very hard it's kind of breaking apart and it doesn't give me as much of it so first i'm going to do the same thing i did before which is just blend them and they blend beautifully on this distressed mixed media paint uh, paper however you see they're not blending all the way down like the other ones did when they were on the gesso the gesso really helps things move along so the as you can see the gelato didn't blend as much but these marabou ones blending beautifully so I wonder if it has to do with the type of paper that makes the difference each one kind of react differently let's see this one this is a tim holtz one and it could be that i didn't put enough but it's just blending on its own it's lightening up but it's not picking up too much of the color let's see with the prima one so yeah this one is blending a little bit easier Let's see the Dina, Dina Wakely one. Yeah, this one's also blending really nice. I mean, they're all blending nicely, but it's just depending on, yeah, this one blends as well, but it leaves a little bit more of a mark. So I'm not so crazy about that. Okay, so now I'm going to try and make my own watercolor with this. So you can make your own watercolors by adding, oh, oops, wrong one. You can make your own watercolors by adding water to them so you can make light watercolors with them and this works on anything you see how it you can paint with it it's hard to see that it's there but it is definitely there now with the marabou same thing this one obviously is a little bit of a darker color so it's more intense but again the same thing you can make really nice watercolors with it with a distress crayon same idea let me put a little bit more it feels like it didn't have so much because I really want to see if it's the intensity I mean sometimes it's just how light I placed it on yeah you see now it it blends more and it has more intensity to it you can use this type of paintbrush which is like a watercolor fillable refillable paintbrush or you can use regular watercolor paintbrushes it's up to you same thing works perfectly this way love it that way yeah now let's see about the scribble sticks same thing so you see depending on the intensity of how much you put there they will paint as well so I love that and this paper from Tim Holtz is great for that you see here pieces of it came off this is what I meant by you can actually create your own intense watercolor spray so the more you put of these crayons in either a bottle or in a in some kind of dish and mix it with water you get a more intense color or intense look to everything so this was a nice experiment to just see that you can use them this way as well the last paper i want to try is a hot press watercolor paper this is a hundred percent cotton and it's a little bit different than the other one which is a cold press one and i wanted to see if there's a difference in them and i did not prep this one as well because i really wanted to see the difference i grabbed some orange colors i do not have the orange from marabou so i'm using yellow instead but i just want to kind of show you the difference and i'm going to do the same exact thing as always just to see if it reacts differently 
on the hot press watercolor paper, which is a smoother, better quality watercolor paper. So I'm going to do a little bit different this than the other one in terms of how I'm placing them, just because I want to try something else as well. So they're going really smoothly on. This is a smoother paper. You could probably also use the Bristol Smooth Paper from Stratmore or any Bristol Smooth Paper. Wow, this is really smooth. This paper is amazing. I mean, it's not cheap. I've just bought it because I wanted to use it for certain projects and I am wasting one of the papers for that. But that's okay because I really want to show you how they work on these as well. Scribble sticks. And the there went art bars. This is also kind of a red, not so much an orange, but that's okay. It's an orangey red. Okay. So I'm gonna do I'm just curious actually how smooth it will go on. Oh yeah, I see it. It's really smooth. Especially the marabou. Wow, marabou really blended smoothly without any water. Let's see about this one. This one does too. So these three blend the nicest without water on this paper. Sorry, I'm just grabbing a wipe. And let's see, I'm trying to use different fingers so they don't blend. So this one without water, obviously, and this one for sure not. So I think these ones have a little bit more of that pastiness than these two. So that's why they blend that way. Now we're going to do it with the wipe like I did before. And let's try it with the wipe with this one. So, so you see how can you can create really cool effects with wipes as well. Maybe I should start with the top. I'm being... So this one has a little bit more intensity to it, but I think it has also to do with the um, colors I choose. I mean, even this yellow is pretty intense and it blends really nicely. This, this one left a little bit more like lines than these two. Let's see with the crayons not blending as nicely on this paper which i thought that everything would so that's okay so far this one blend these two blended the best but with gesso it would blend beautifully like i saw before the scribble sticks leaving a little bit of marks but i can still blend them more and lastly this one it's the least intense of course right and most of it comes off so I'm going to do the test with the water as well. Yeah, so you see how nice, how nice this blends. But it does leave, like, it does leave that circle in the middle. Let's see with the yellow. Yeah, this one blends much easier. Look at the marabou crayons blend beautifully on this paper. Really, really nicely. You don't even see a line anywhere where the gelatos leave the line. Same thing with this. This one leaves a line. So unless you don't want these lines, you definitely need to use some kind of gesso underneath. And then you will not see that. Let's see here. So, so far, the marabou crayons blended nicely. Oh, the prima ones are blending nicely as well. So it all depends on the formula that the crayons were made with. Let's see, Dina Wakely's blends beautifully on this paper. And finally, let's see with this one. Yeah, it also blends really nicely, doesn't leave any effects. Okay, that's good, that's good to know. So I really like that. And now I want to see if it will work with the stencils. So let me see. So I'm taking this stencil and I don't think it's going to work on these type of surfaces. Actually, maybe I'll do it a little bit differently. So 
I'm going to apply here on the side. So I'm going to compare this one and I'm going to do it on the other one as well with the gesso. So one of the techniques that I love doing is doing like a masking or ghosting. And one of the best ones is to do it with stencils. I am going to apply more color here. There's that. And let's see how it works with the different ones. Okay, so I don't have space here, so I'll have to do it over here. Okay, so now I'm going to put the stencil on top, and you're going to see what I mean. And this you can do in larger areas as well. So you could work within a stencil and create patterns. So you're removing some of the color from the gelato so it does work on this type of paper and there's no gesso underneath usually it works better when there's gesso but it's working beautifully with this as well oh it looks really good like that let's see with the these ones yeah so that looks good yes it's working i'm so happy i wasn't sure if it was going to work on these type of backgrounds but it does so you see it creates really cool patterns. By removing some of the intensity, you get these really cool patterns in the background. So this one didn't work just as well. I think I put too much and you can still see the lines. And this works as well if you do it on the one with gesso. It looks really, it works really, really well. So for example, let's see if it works with ones that it's already been done. So for example, you could put the art, cray art crayon on, dry it up, and then come back and still have a reaction with the water. It will still react with the water and create a pattern. That's the beauty of the crayons. These are great techniques that you can do. You can remove things and create those really cool patterns. So... I'm trying to see if they will all work the same, especially when there's gesso underneath. Things work much better and you can remove it much easier. This effect is fantastic when you have gesso underneath. You see the, the intensity of it is much better. Let's use a little bit of a smaller area here. Oi, I just dirtied that. Did not mean to do that. You see how nicely it removes itself? So that's what I love about the crayons, that they're so easy to remove. There we go. I think it's dirty from something else. The lighter the color, obviously the lighter the effect. But there's so many different techniques that can be done with these crayons. Really ridiculously amazing techniques. And you can see all of them everywhere. So let's talk a little bit about the price point, okay? So let's start with the gelatos. As I said, gelatos come in so many colors, I can't even count them. And I do have price list here on the side. I actually went and looked that up. So in terms of gelatos, and let's go with these. Let's put, I'll put out the ones I used and also the bigger one, which is a double scoop. It comes in a bigger size. It comes in a huge variety of colors. And all you have to do is just either buy them in packages or individually. For example, each one of them individually can cost between $2 and $2.50. And all the prices I'm talking about are US dollars. And of course, you can get some on sale in different places, but the sets, for example, a large set that has like 33 colors can cost like $50, while a smaller set of 15 can cost $25, and things like a small set that have like only six of the same colors, so they, they group them into colors, the, those can cost about $10, and sometimes you can get them on, on sale. Like, I mean, these are like the retail price that they go for, but you can definitely uh, find them cheaper in different places. In terms of availability, they're highly available in many different stores, both online and brick-and-mortar stores, and a lot of people carry them. These are they're basically almost the original ones. It's by Faber-Castell. So there is just lots of different colors that you can use with these. So that's, these are really fun. 
The next ones are the Marabou crayons and definitely these are the newest ones I've played with recently. I hadn't played with these before and it come in a variety of colors but I only have a few colors only because these were sent to me. Now not everything that I am talking about today was sent to me. A lot of the things I've bought myself, almost actually everything I've bought myself except for Mary the Marabou crayons. Everything else I've purchased with my own money. So uh, over the years, I've wanted to experiment with different things. I love the different consistencies of different products. So it makes a huge difference for me to have a variety. In terms of these, I love, love, love the fact that they're longer and have more in them. And you can roll them up. And the only thing, as I said, is the little lids that get lost everywhere. But other than that, I would say these are the creamiest out of all. And I love them just as much as everything else, but these are basically the creamiest, the ones that I found the creamiest. In terms of the Marabou, they, sold, they sell individually for about $4 each, and or you can buy them in sets of four for $15, but there's not a lot of colors. Not a lot of colors like the Gelatos or the Distress Crayons. There is less colors, but as I said, they're quite intense in color and very smooth. The next ones is the Distress Crayons and they come in little packages like these and they come in sets of six. I don't have all the colors. These packages go retail for about $13 but many times they're on sale so you could get them probably for like $10. I just grabbed a few colors from here. They come like this or you can put them in a tin all together. There's about 10 different sets so there's a huge variety of colors. And as I said, they're about 10 to 10, 13 dollars per set, and also you can buy them individually for about 250. They're also quite creamy and really nice to use individually or with water. And again, the same thing with the lids, you might lose them. The only good thing is that it has the color lid, so you know which one you've lost, and they can be brought out or in depending on how much you want of it. So it's almost like a lipstick that way. So the next one is the Prima Marketing one. And the Prima Marketing one comes in a set like this. It comes with 24 colors. And I took a few of them from this. It comes with 24 colors. Now this is a really used up set. I've used this a lot. And they call them the water soluble oil pastels. But they're still kind of like art crayons. The nice thing about this is that it's 24 colors and they go for about $20. So they're quite inexpensive in terms of how much they cost and how much you get for it. Because I've used these a lot. I've used this. I had a class where I used to use them a lot. I mean, they look really used up. They come like that, but it's not, doesn't look nice when I'm showing you the ugly way. They actually come pretty beautiful inside with, with all the colors um, listed in terms of the shades so it's really nice and it comes with many different shades of blues purples reds blue you can actually see all the colors right here so those I've used a lot these are was one of the originals that I had be after gelato so I had gelatos first then I had the oil pastels then I got the art uh, sorry the distress crayons and recently I got the scribble sticks and the marabou uh, art crayons so those are the ones that I have gotten recently in terms of the scribble sticks so they come I'll show you how they come they come in this really nice tin beautiful nice tin and there's two sets of these they come in this is the first set and let me just tell you that how much it costs they cost about $22 for 12 crayons and there's only two sets. Oops, this is something I was scribbling about. So you see they come like this and you can, the nice thing is you can put them back in here like that and you have it all set to go. So you could travel with this and it's just really nice to have them this way. So I love the fact that the way they store, I love that they're not as intense but really blend nicely and they're good for art journaling mainly like it's not so much for covering a huge area but to giving little touches to things and it comes with many different colors i only have the first set i don't have the second one but i'm sure it comes with more complementary colors to the ones that are already here so i do like the tin because it doesn't flip anywhere and doesn't have lids that's the one thing that i i'm kind of like don't want so many lids everywhere 
and finally i want to talk about the derwent art bar so this one somebody recommended it and i ended up buying them and i haven't used as much they're actually made in the uk as it says here there's a different derwent i think is a uk company also come in this really nice tin and come in different color combinations I wonder if the ink tents from Derwent would be something that you would be interested more in, but these are really cool. I found them a little bit lighter. If you're looking for something a little bit lighter to use, then this is definitely the thing to go. I like that they come in this individual packaging and something like this, which is um, the art bars, they go for $24. They're about $58. I think I got them on sale because I don't remember paying that much, but who knows? Maybe I did pay that much. $58 for $24. And the ink tents, which is the ones that I don't have now, they must be very intense. They're $65 for $24. And that's a retail price. Obviously, that's not when you uh, get some kind of sale on them, especially on like Amazon and stuff. And the last one I didn't do, it's the Neo Colors. I don't have those, but they go for, depending on the size of the packaging, they go for 10 of them for $14.50. There is 30 of them for like $43. And then if you get the whole set of 84 is $120. And a lot of people swear by these. You can go and check them out in different other videos where people compared those as well. I didn't have them, so I couldn't compare them. But these are the ones that I wanted to compare. And I'm just really happy of the comparison. I will show you again what i did so this is the one where i didn't have anything on them and this created beautiful effects on this cold press watercolor paper then we have the one that i put the white gesso on so beautiful beautiful blending and also masking so it was really easy to do that i loved how they went on the clear gesso and the black gesso as well. Some of the more intense ones are over here, while the lighter ones are at the bottom. Then I tried them also, of course, on the Tim Holtz Distress Paper. So that's really, really nice. You see how nicely it blended and it didn't need any type of prepping. So that's some good paper out there. And the last one was the hot press watercolor paper and you can see that it blended beautifully as well so the nice thing about these is that they blend whether or not you put uh, gesso or not you can get different effects and you can also create some beautiful things with them so thank you so so much here i'm going to put these there went ones here thank you so much for joining me today while i talked about the different water soluble crayons out there in the market i try to cover as much as i can but i'm sure i forgot to say something and of course always share your ideas and information with me as well i love when you guys Tell me about your experiences with the different products. I just can tell you as much as I know. And sometimes I have more knowledge, but I forget to say it. So if I didn't cover something, just let me know. Thank you so, so much. I hope you liked the intensity of this video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends on social media. That is really, really important for me. If you share it, then more people know about my channel and subscribing is really important because the more views the more videos i can bring to everyone so thank you so much and have an amazing day bye